everybody. I'm Dr. John. I'm the host of tonight's show. This is Ed O'Farrell. Thanks for joining us, brother. Thanks for having me, John. He's a busy family man. He's a CDL driver, and he's under chiropractic care. I want people who are CDL drivers to see how he went from a CDL driver to a chiropractic patient. So, Ed, just give everybody a 30-second explanation of who you are. Yeah, so my name's Edward O'Farrell, as I said. I'm 37 years old, been driving for about 15 years. Um, as you know, as every driver, we drive, you know, we're bouncing around the truck all day long, sometimes with 13, 14 hour days, sometimes even 16 hour days, um, excruciating days. Sometimes, you know, you're just bouncing in the truck, you know, you land awkwardly, sometimes jumping up and down the truck, up and down the stairs. Um, you just, you, you don't realize your body is just, you know, like, uh, twist the way you're twisting and turning, it adds up eventually. So I started having, you know, some pains in my back, neck also, and then, um, one of my buddies that came to you, Dr. John, yeah. had told me, oh, you know, why don't you check out Dr. John? This was before I even knew that you did the, uh, CDL. the, the CDL exams. Okay. And then I came here and then got my first adjustment ever, actually. You're my first chiropractor yeah, I've ever cool. been to. Yeah. And here we are six years later, and I get at least twice a year, you know. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, it just, you know, just makes me feel better when I get, you know, when you, when you do the adjustments and stuff like that. It helps with my neck. Um, I remember the first time, I think the first time when you first did, when I got up, like I felt the blood go through my body, you know, like yeah, my hair stood up and everything. It's like, it was like circulation started, you know, cool. flowing, you know, let's, let's take a break. Yeah. Um, just to give an idea now, he has a surprise. He's going to tell us about when we come back on air. So go get a big glass of water, come back in two minutes. You know, but one thing where I never want to get retired. You saw me now tonight where you're waiting for me. We just had a bunch of new people call us where, where, where we try to fit them in before the show. They're afraid of chiropractors because mm -hmm. some are very rough. Right. I have a technique that I think is effective, but not real rough. Yeah. When you came here six years ago, were you afraid at all to get adjusted by a chiropractor? Um, not afraid, more mis more like misinformed. Okay. I didn't, you know, I didn't know what, what to expect. I've right. never, you were the first chiropractor I've ever dealt with. Okay. And okay. then, you know, I, I'm originally from New York City. So, you know, I moved here in 2010, 2011, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then I think the first time I saw you was back in 16. No, I think like 18, okay. 17, 18. And um, so, no, I mean, you, you were very gentle, you know, very great experience, very nice, polite. Um, the office is great. And um, first time, I mean, it felt great. Like I felt like my hair stood up the very first time you, you know. Well, let, let's say right adjustment. now, if there's people watching the show. Yeah. Headaches, back aches. But they're afraid. They, they heard they go on, uh, what's it called, Hulu, and mm -hmm. they see these chiropractors getting these ropes and, and they, they pull their, people's necks. I've seen that. And we don't do that here. Uh, tell the truth. How do we get a, 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 an afraid person who's hurting to trust to come and see us? So what, what would you say to that patient? Um, to come specifically to this office? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a great office. I mean, he's very gentle. Um, takes his time. You know, he's concerned about your well-being. They, they didn't know me from a hole in the wall. And automatically told me, you know, certain things that I can do to, you know, get myself better in reference to my sleep patterns, like not sleep on my, you know, on like on my stomach. And um, yeah, I mean, he's a great doctor. You know, you should definitely come and try him out. He's very gentle, takes his time, doesn't rush anything, tells you to breathe, exhale, inhale, so he can make the proper adjustments and um, you won't regret it. Definitely come see Dr. John. So besides chiropractic, then you came here initially for that, but then you gradually found out we do CDLs. All right. You were saying off the air in New York City, those other places, and had you waiting like what three hours? Did you say? Oh yeah, up to three hours. Um, the mo well, not the I've heard stories up to three hours. I've waited about two to two and a half. Okay. Two and a half hours. You know, um, maybe two forty. But at least here, I've been I've been here. Um, it's not long at all. Maybe half an hour mm -hmm. as long as as long as I make my appointment time. But yeah. you guys, there's been I think one time the last time around that I, I got caught up in traffic driving from New York, because that's what I do. I deliver to New York all the time. Okay. And you guys were able to move my appointment for me, so you guys you know, made it convenient for me also. So. Well, our job is to give a thorough exam, right. so you guys don't have high blood pressure, you know, uh, a diabetes, you know, protein in the urine and stuff like that. But yet, my chiropractic patients will say to me, you're so busy, why are you doing these CDLs? Almost all the CDL drivers, they become chiropractic patients yeah. and then they bring their wives. So it, to me, it's, it's one and the same thing is to get both. So oh, yeah. tell a CDL driver, if they're going somewhere else, why would you suggest that they come here? Um, simple, just like I said, um, 
you know, very, very convenient, um, very friendly, very patient. He knows what he's talking about, that's for sure. Um, ever since day one, you've made me feel welcome. You know, you've always made me feel nice, very, very respectful, very polite. Um, and like I said, you didn't know me from home no one. You said, oh, you know, you should, you know, do this. It'll, it'll definitely help you sleep better and avoid this so that, you know, you don't get headaches. If you get headaches throughout the day, it's probably because you're sleeping wrong or stuff like that. So I remember when you told me that, not knowing me at all, you know, it meant a lot to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if you, you, you said it before. You have five children. Yeah. When you come home from work, they, they gravitate. I, I feel oh, yeah. when you are healthy, you can express your best self. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a sciatica or a headache, it's and difficult. You, you come home, you're probably tired. Say, kids, leave me alone. Yeah. Dad's tired. So what I love about my work is we, we help Ed to be his best self. So then those kids, they, they gravitate towards you. Oh, and they appreciate it. Trust me. Yeah, they, they appreciate yeah, so it. So you're a good guy yeah, too. Yeah, you know? I, try, I try, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I try. <laughs> but tell people, so what is your surprise? Uh, How much weight uh, have weight you lost? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So um, back in February of 22, I started my workout journey. I was pushing almost 300 pounds. So I was about 298, it was. And as of today, I'm about 230, I think 231, when I checked myself three days ago. That's exciting. So, yeah. So um, me, I, I think anybody watching this show, especially this time of the year, right. you know, I appreciate they, they get motivated. Right. I think you have to wait till you're mentally ready. You know, yeah, to, to so I back. broke my leg. I remember I told you I broke my right leg. Okay. So when I broke my right leg, they told me it was going to be about two years before you can do anything. So it kind of everything fell into plan. I, I gained a lot of weight because I broke my leg. I wasn't working due to my injury. So then once I got back on track after the two years when I felt no pain anymore, I was able to do a little bit of weight here and there, started eating better, made the decision you know, to be better for the sake of myself, of course, but my wife and kids. I want to be here you know, long term. I want to be here for them, see them grow up. you know. So... That's why I made the move that I made and, you know, the changes that I had to make for myself as well as my family. But know? tell me, we'll get back to this for the next segment, but yeah. you said it, you, you got a little bit off track, mm -hmm. which means you gained back a couple pounds. Yeah. How do you help motivate people watching this show? Because that's all I hear. Doc, I was on a good routine, but I went on a vacation and now I just can't get back on track again. Well, how, how do you keep on track? It's just so it's easy. It's easy to not go. Right. It's easy to not want to work out. It's the easiest thing is to eat, gain the weight. It's just you have to just set yourself mentally. I mean, I had a goal. My goal was to get to around 220 before I went on vacation because I knew I was going to go on vacation. I knew it was going to be difficult for me to stay on track because I'm not going to go on vacation to a whole other country and work out at the gym. Mm -hmm. You know, so I went to the Dominican Republic twice, went to Greece, had a great time. Family had a great time, but now that I'm back, I'm like, you know what? I, I don't feel right about myself. I want to get back to what I was doing that made me feel good. And it's pretty much just, you just got to set yourself with some goals. And, you know, that motivation, my motivation is my family. Good. You know? Well, again, folks, I love being a chiropractor. I love being what also is, it's called a medical examiner. Right. To right. do these CDLs. Right. And I love encouraging them, and that's why we want to encourage others. So... Go for, again, a glass of water. Come back and let's talk a little bit more about losing weight is not easy, but as a chiropractor, as a CDL examiner, mm -hmm. keeps blood pressure down, keeps the sugar diabetes, like your A1C, all of that stuff is important. So come back, we'll listen to a second segment that I want you to watch me adjust it so you can actually see what the adjustment is like, okay? So come right back. Hey guys, I'm Dr. John. Thanks for, again, I'm always respectful. Thanks for tuning in. You have choices, especially with these holidays. You could be watching <clears throat> the Giants lose. Oh my God. You could be watching the Eagles win. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is, I love what I do at this office. And I really think it would change people's lives. So yes. let's talk a little bit now. So he came as a chiropractic patient. He became them for his CDL exams, but he, then he lost 70 pounds. So let's see how the body talks to us. When my dad was a heavy man after he retired as a mailman, he became diabetic, okay. high blood pressure. Yeah. Went to the hospital, he was sickly, lost 200 pounds. Wow. All of it went away. Gone. Yeah. So you had, let, let's talk about, he has sleep apnea. Explain for those people who don't know much about it, what is sleep apnea? Well, I'm just going to tell you from my experience because I don't know exactly. But so sleep apnea was, um, according to my wife, because she's, she's an RN. Okay. So uh, she would tell me throughout the night, I'd be sleeping and... She would hear me snoring, and all of a sudden, it was like a sudden stop. I, I, I looked like I wasn't breathing. She would tap me, hey, are you okay? And all of a sudden, I would get my breath back. Supposedly, sleep apnea is you stop breathing while you're sleeping. Um, I ended up getting tested, went down to um, 
Bloomsburg, I think it was somewhere, did a sleep sleep study. Yep. And it wasn't chronic, but it was pretty bad because I, I was uh, I stopped breathing about forty four times an hour. Okay. And then so they just to define it for yeah. you. When they tested him, if it's any more than 15 times per hour, okay. you're 44. Yeah. So then you're getting a lack of oxygen. Right. So you should have 92% oxygen at least mm -hmm. in your body. Sleep at, my wife has a CPAP. Okay. She had still. 80%. Yep, still okay. has. So with a lack of oxygen, it's same thing. She, she snores, right. so she would stop breathing. So your CPAP, it blows yep. oxygen into your nostrils. With the oxygen that you need, so yeah. So my wife enjoys, she, wa she wears it every night. So are you pretty compliant? Well, I don't use it. I don't. I don't. I got retested. Well, when you were, when you, when you yeah, were, yeah. Well, I only, I only used it for about a month. Okay. Because initially, when I started using it, two weeks before that, I started working out. Okay. So I started seeing the results and stuff like that, and then um. So by you losing that seventy pounds, yeah, you no longer needed the CPAP no. machine. Yeah. So did fortunately, you... I didn't have, I didn't have, the, you know, fortunately, I don't have diabetes. I didn't have high cholesterol. It was, was weird because you would think I would have high cholesterol, being you know 70, 80 pounds heavier than what I am now. Right. Um, they didn't have that. They didn't have anything wrong with me other than like joint pains mm -hmm. because of the weight, the excessive weight. But um, yes, yeah, so, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so when you get off track, yeah, you gain a couple pounds. Mm -hmm. Many of my patients say to me, John, I was losing weight, but I went on a cruise and now I, I just can't get back my med. See, the human, the brain craves sugar. Right. So when you eat food, it's broken down into glucose, okay. which the body uses for energy. Energy. Yeah. So when you start eating, say you started split. Okay, this holiday. You're going to have a lot of turkey, uh, stuffing, mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. It turns it into glucose. Mm -hmm. So once your brain starts to get that glucose, it, it starts craving it. Right. So the goal is to stay off it long enough to break that craving. So when you got off track a couple pounds, right. is that what you're doing now? You're, you're stopping carbs to stop the brain from eating the sugars? So, yeah. So um, it's exactly what it is. I, I, limit, I limit my intake. You know, pretty much um, that's pretty much what I do to... I, I love carbs. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, I love bread. Most you know? people do. Yeah, I love bread. I love pizza. Yeah. You know, um, just yesterday, my wife made pasta and then she had garlic bread, you know, so I don't... I'm not... You don't have to cut it out. But yeah, you don't have to cut it out, but you have to, you, have to pay, you have to limit yourself. You can't, you know, you can't have a big bread bowl, you know, you can't have a whole cake. You can't, you know, maybe like a little piece, a little muffin or something like that, little bites. You just got to pace yourself. You got to, you know, set yourself up to the point that, you know, you can have a little bit just enough to be content. And satisfied, but don't overdo it. You know. Well, now, if, if there were two people, and again, folks, I'm going to talk from my heart. If you get on a scale and you're down one pound, mm -hmm. right? It's like a, a victory. Right. But if, so we have choices. So during the week, if we think I'm going to have a donut, or I'm going to have some pizza or, or, or garlic bread, I would rather because guys they say, John, I, I want to live. I want to enjoy life. And right. my point is, yes, you can enjoy life. Right. You can have some carbs, but it's a, it's a, to me, it's a bigger joy to get on that scale and be down a pound and have that mental willpower right. that says, honey, no, I don't want a second helping versus saying, you know what? Yeah, give me that second help. Then it's, it's like a, a terrible feeling. Get on that scale and think, oh my God, I'm up three more pounds again. Yeah. yeah so is that- you, so Well, you get, you get discouraged. If you go on the scale all the time. So what I did was I learned, you know, I met different people that helped me big time on my journey, losing 70 pounds. I didn't do it on my own. I you know, looked at videos on YouTube, found stuff on you know, Google, met people at the gym that also were very helpful. Um, but the big thing with it is you just have to just commit. You know what I mean? Like, it's like you said, you, know, you don't have to just completely cut it out, but you have to make adjustments. You have to make changes to your diet for the sake of what you want. So what I would do is I would calculate all the weight I would lose in seven days and then divide it by seven. And that would give you the average of what you lose. Usually you want to lose about a pound and a half to two pounds because depending on what you eat, you don't want to lose muscle. You want to right. lose the body fat, you don't want to lose muscle. So you just have to keep track of stuff like that. And just, like I said, portions of what you eat. Be, health, you know, be healthy, be mindful, and cut out soda. You like soda? I don't, Pop. I just drink water. Okay. I think it's so sweet. Yeah, I see that. That was my that was you my like soda? iced coffees and soda were my yeah. But also because I drive trucks, I get up at two in the morning. I'm long long hours, long days. I need the sugar. Right. So now I I cut that down. Good. It's been difficult, but I'm committed. You know, yes. I'm motivated to do so. So good. No, I I do think folks, if you're contemplating a diet, you know, many people we, we've tried, we failed on diets, so we feel guilty. I think you have to almost like a fighter. You you have to wait till you're mentally at that state to say okay. I'm going to now train, you know, for the next fight. Mm -hmm. I think you have to train and stay dedicated. Yeah. So if you're not ready, if you're going to splurge and enjoy these holidays, do it. 
But then after that's why I think everybody has these yeah. New Year's <laughs> resolutions. Get rid of all of the, the goodies and now get month, monthly money. Oh, in January, the gym is completely crowded. Everybody's at the gym yeah, in January. Yeah, By yeah. January 2nd, January 3rd, everybody's there. Yeah, yeah it's just, it's weird. It's, I guess, like you said, New Year's resolution. That might be mine. Well, you know? I appreciate you doing the show, Ed. <laughs> I appreciate you having me. So he has five children, folks. He comes here for chiropractic care. He comes here for a CDL exam. And you and your wife are going to get massages for doing the show. I appreciate it. Right? Thank you. So yeah. don't you snore during that massage. Oh, though. no. Okay. Hey, listen. If it's that good, I just might. <laughs> okay. But again, the, the, to me, the best part of these guys coming to my office, I want people to see what the adjustment is like. You know, I used to talk in the, stu the TV studio about having a drop piece table. I'm sure a lot of people must have thought, what does that mean? What's a drop piece table? Is that the one that you have? Yeah, there's this table. For the so. alignment, like for my, the one right. I use? Okay. So we haven't been adjusted, what, in months? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do a leg check. We're going to see what's out of alignment. So let's go see what adjustments are. Sounds good. Thanks, folks. Ed is a, a man who loves his family. He's a, a truck driver who, you heard him, 13-hour days at times. These guys, they get bounced on these highways, stressed out with congestive traffic. Chiropractic care allows his back to be stronger. So we're going to show you exactly what an adjustment is like. Some chiropractors have a heavier adjustment. Some people want that. I can be a little bit heavier for bigger people, but I'll be blunt. If you can be just as effective and be more gentle. And that's what I have found. It's not rough on him, it's not rough on me. So I, I wanna do this for hopefully 20 more years. So let's look and see what the adjustment is like. Ed has a right and a left sacroiliac joint. From bouncing on his air seat in an air, okay, truck drivers have an air seat. The suspension's not the best thing on these trucks. So their air seat, not like a car, that, that bounces for these guys. So I wanna see his legs should be the same length if his sacroiliac joints are in place. Many chiropractors that I know never even check this. They just crack away, crack everything, crack the both sides of the back, crack the whole spine, but the, you have to have, in my opinion, a specific objective. If one side is out, fix just the one side. So let's see what we find. We're gonna put the table down. This high-low table's cool. Ed just comes and takes a nap. He doesn't have to crawl on and crawl off like some patients or some tables. So this is a Kemp orthopedic test. We want to see if the legs are level. And they are, to be honest with you. I was hoping they'd be off. But so when it looks perfectly level, his back is in place. So then we don't even adjust him. But just to give an idea of what we did do a couple weeks ago, many guys, if they have a manual truck, they lean to the right to keep their hands on the uh, gear shift. So this table, you get on the right side and you just sort of push it. So those of you who have been hurt by a chiropractor, look at this again. The angle of my arm is called the line of drive. There's a table that has a proper height. And as it drops, we call it a drop piece table. The bone moves gently. No pain. No cracking. I get so many people, here's what they say. I was cracked so much 20 years ago. You think you're going to get me better by doing this? I said, give it a couple of days and come back. I love it on that second visit. They come in with this smile, like, I don't believe it. You didn't crack me all over. I wasn't sore at all after the adjustment, and yet they feel so much better. Again, all you do is get on a certain angle. So what we're looking at, just to give you, I hope you understand what I'm doing here. This is his spine. So I'm getting on his right sacroiliac, and we're just pushing it gently back in place. <clears throat> so anybody watching this show that has any kind of lower back pain, I guarantee you, one of your legs is longer than the other. So then again, my job is to gently just push. Very easy. I just did that for 12 hours today. Push, gentle adjustment. So once that's fixed, 25 vertebrae. I'm like a detective. I ask these truckers, do not sit on a wallet. A thick wallet will throw off their spine. When they come home from work, they can lay in a recliner to watch TV, but never a couch. Couch sags, throws off the back. Some guys or girls have a bad habit of sitting on top of their leg or sitting what I call Indian style. So we go through a posture of how they sleep. Some people sleep all contorted. 
and that's what knocks your spine out. So I want my patients to do like a self-analysis as to how they sleep, how they sit. So when I get them in alignment, then as a team, they're, they're going to... And he only comes in every now and then just for like a little checkup. So the back's in place. Some people, if they sleep on their stomachs, they twist their neck to breathe. So we want to make sure that the thoracic spine is straight. Now his neck is off on the left side here. So let's, let's show you what a neck adjustment is like. So Ed, you never sleep on your stomach, do you? No. Make sure your kids don't. Because that's when it sort of starts as a habit. Okay, lay on your back. I love to have some humor when I'm working. When a wife is sitting there, I'll say to the wife, I don't think your husband's head is on straight. <laughs> and of course, we get a, a nice reaction from these wives. I think that she loves you, but she would probably say, Amen, brother. No, yes, she would. <laughs> <laughs> now, you could feel it. Feel a bone? Yeah. So there's like a bone off to the right, and you can feel it. Well, this side is softer. Yeah, I don't feel anything on that side. Yeah, so that, and again, only God knows. He might have been a stomach sleeper years ago or a car accident. You know, if I could ask people that from the, since the day they're born, sports injuries, Falling off bicycles, car accidents, sleep on st something caused that knot. And my job, even if there's no headaches, is to gently reduce it, little by little. So the goal is not to be rough. Now there are some people, maybe 10% of my practice, that do not want their necks cracked like I'm about to do. Then we don't do it. There's a, another more gentler way. Now let it relax for me. Good. So I if you can hear that on TV, but it does not have to be rough. You know, people don't have to be traumatized by a chiropractor. My prayer is that this show renews your faith to say, not every chiropractor is rough. You don't have to be rough to get a good result. So again, one little more, then we're done. Good. I'm talking, but you could feel it, right? Yeah. Just a little click. <laughs> so you go home now. Tell your wife, honey, my head is on straighter. <laughs> so folks, I love what I do. Enjoy your holidays, but enjoy the gift of health. God gave us a beautiful, to me, it's like a temple of the Holy Spirit, but we have to take care of the body God gave us. Happy Holidays.